Hey gang, I've not long got home from work. It's dark already, so I've got my light on. I hope the lighting's okay, but I absolutely need to film this video now. And this video is all Fern's fault. Fern from Wild Fern, I have a channel linked down below, posted this video a couple of weeks ago or last week, I can't remember what it was, all about all of her begonias. I've always admired her begonias and I've, I've admired like her passion for them. But seeing them all together, she's influenced me. And I have a package of begonias to open. <laughs> so this came today. This is from Dibley's Nursery. I don't know how like far and wide they send their plants, but I've definitely seen Dibley's plants, particularly begonias, um, for sale in garden centres within my area. So they're definitely in the southwest. I don't know how far they go. I have three begonias in here, two of which were shown in Fern's video. One of those I have technically got already, but I wanted a new one. And then one that I just saw and I was like, I think I need you. So <laughs> let's get into this begonia unboxing. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's Friday as well, gang. Like, what a great way to start the weekend with a plant unboxing and new plants. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so you get your little uh, receipt of what you've purchased. Dibley's growing tips. Oh, I can see leaves. <laughs> oh, so pretty. Okay, these packing peanuts. <laughs> They are good, but they don't have to make a mess. Okay, um, I'm gonna try and pull out, I don't know if they're secured in. Okay, I probably can't even see. No, they're not taped down. Okay, I'm just gonna pull out from the base. Oh, look at you. So this is, we got a little able, Begonia Lucerna which is the one I have had before. And I, if you've been on this channel, you'll probably know the story, but I gave it to my mum. I can't remember why I gave it to my mum, but she put it in the conservatory and it went from this lovely deep gray green color to this weird, not nice burnt orange color. And it never really recovered, even though it's, I've like brought it back, I've propagated it, I've had it in better conditions. The new leaves coming out, are still a weird funky color and I'm just not enjoying it anymore so I really wanted to replace it and now I've replaced it like seeing ferns I was just like yeah I want I want that original plant that I had back and now I can start again I really do love this begonia I love the way it grows oh what is going on with this leaf it's a weird shape I love the way it grows. I love the spot to leaf ratio, like they're quite small spots. They get really vibrant red backs. It's stunning. I'll have some like photos going. I'm really, really happy. These are all plug plants and they were pretty cheap in my opinion. So, oh, it doesn't have the price. I feel like this one was five pound. I'll put the prices on the screen. But yeah, this is the first begonia. It does look, the light does make it look so shimmery. Is it too much light? Mm, can't really tell what's the better light. Mid light? Oh, I hate filming when it gets dark. So beautiful though. So, so stunning. This next one was like, it was the one in Fern's video and I was like, I think I need it. This is the Begonia Irene Nuss. Don't know what that is. Oh, it looks so good with that light. This is a dark, 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 shimmery. The shimmer on that Begonia is stunning. It's a shimmery Begonia and the leaves are a dark red as well. 
both of those, so this one, the Irene Nuss and the uh, Lucerna, are both cane begonias. I really like a cane begonia. I love how they grow. I love how kind of structural, bleh. I love how structural they can look. Is that a word? Structural. It's a word, right? I love, I just love them. I think they're so beautiful, so elegant. And in my experience so far, really easy to grow. I'm not so impressed with their packaging. Like I feel like this leaf would have been perfect when it went in to the box. And it's definitely got some, some damage going on, but that's okay. It will grow new leaves. I'm pretty sure this one was eight pound. Very good. And then the final one. <laughs> so the photo that I purchased was this. And this is what I've got. Oh, it's so weird. <laughs> this is the guy I've got. Let me see if I can get the other leaves out. So I'm not completely sure how to pronounce this. Begonia Seismarie? Seismarie? Size not completely sure of the pronunciation. But it, there was a, it, the colouring, the pattern, the hairiness. I was intrigued it is very hairy and I don't know if this is like a begonia that needs to be kept in a terrarium like if it needs that kind of high humidity or if it would be okay out and about it's so hairy you can see you can see those hairs oh, it's so weird oh my god oh it's quite beautiful even in like this light obviously there is not really any light but it's like a a grey bluey green with like a tinge of purple and then there's the kind of sage green bits and then oh, I do really like the hairs <laughs> that's so weird <laughs> oh it's really cool okay I'm gonna have to go and do some research on how to care for these and what I'll do is at the end of this video because I've unboxed my plants now we are coming to the end it was a very quick video oh I suppose I could they're plug plants so I probably need to pop them up maybe I'll do that I'll, let's do that I'll do that now let me go and get my stuff okay so I've decided to go no drainage so I've got two glass vessels and a plastic one in here I have a bit of chunky zeolite and a bit of vermiculite and I'm adding that to my Just Houseplant Potting Soil from Soil Ninja. I actually think this mix would probably be okay for begonias without adding any amendments, but I just like to, I like to add amendments. It makes me, I don't know, enjoy the process a bit more. I have no idea where I'm gonna put these I try to be quick and just grab what I can, but every time I forget there's holes either side of here and I'm covered in soil and so is the table. Every time. Just need to get my potting bin back. Ooh. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I'm using that. I don't know where I'm gonna put these begonias. I will give them like a period of like isolation before kind of putting them next to my other plants. Um, I don't really know where that period of isolation can be <laughs> because I'm running out of place. At the, I'm running out of space. I did not need more plants. Thanks, phone. <laughs> so this is the mix that we're going with. I think it looks really good. I've tried to go for like a bit of like a bit of a mix that will add air pockets for the roots with the perlite and the zeolite and then because we know I'm an underwater I've added in the um the vermiculite which can also add some aeration but it's it's good at holding moisture in the soil so between my uh underwatering it'll hopefully hold enough moisture to keep the begonias happy so I think I'm gonna go the glass vessels for the two cane begonias because they will grow tall and they'll need a bit of a weightier base 
before they get their report next year. And the size more, however you pronounce that one, I'm gonna put it in the plastic one. I think I'm gonna start with that one. I'm really excited about it. Um, so the packaging looks like, from Dibley's, looks like it's completely plastic free. The little um, bags that they come in say that they're biodegradable on them, which is quite cool. Um, this little plug is the, I think these are the biodegradable ones as well. These are the ones that roots can grow through really easily, but as it's a plug plant and I can access it, I will take it off. But not all, um, not all plugs are death plugs. Like, I don't think you need to panic every time you see them. Some of them easily allow roots to grow through them. Some of them don't, but I think they get a bad rap and they don't need to, you don't need to worry quite so much about them. So I can see some roots popping out. So that's good. It looks like, I don't know whether it was, if it was grown in peat or if that's cocoa coir. I'll see if I can find out on their website. Ooh, I'm excited. How far down do I want to put it? Probably not that far. I'm not going to break that up. I'm just going to leave it. There's quite a nice um, amount of moisture in that. So that's good. Oh, what cute. Oh, I hope that these begonias carry on growing through the next kind of few months because it <laughs> it looks a little bit silly doesn't it i don't know if that new leaf is dying or if it's going to unfurl i feel like it might be dying there's another new one there that's going to be okay <laughs> that's so cute i'm so intrigued to see how i do with this one i'm a little bit worried if you have it and you know whether it is a terrarium plant and it needs to be like cloched or put in a terrarium please let me know or can it just hang out in this environment and not like melt on me please please let me know so i've got one potted up next next one up Let's see what we're what we're dealing with the lesson, same situation. I'm gonna remove that plug. Oh, oh! Roots have started to grow through this one. That's fine. We'll just have to. There we go. Take them off. You can see some of those roots. They look good. Oh, I'm really happy to have this one again. Like I have still got the other one, like the one that had been to my mum's, but um, it's not looking amazing, I won't lie. Um, and it is currently on the balcony. And if you've been here a while, you'll know that plants that go on the balcony are, uh, they're on their last legs. <laughs> like I don't know what to do with it. It's just so, like I really thought repotting it would mean that the growth would come back this nice green color and it just it just hasn't and i don't like it anymore is that one all potted up what a cutie i'm so sorry the lighting is terrible isn't it is that better i can't i'm gonna have to invest in like one of those soft box light things aren't i last one Oh, I'm so excited to see this one grow big. Like ferns is really beautiful. I just love that it's like um like it's a bit of a sinister shaped leaf. Like it's kind of angry. Again, really hard to see with this light. Um hopefully the clips at the end will show it in its true beauty. I wonder what this is a hybrid of, like Irene Nuss. Like what is this created from? Or was it just discovered and named Irene Nuss? Don't know. Ooh, some good dangly roots there. Oh. For some reason, it feels like a really long time since I got a new plant. 
When was the last time I got? Oh, I guess it probably would have been from the plant swap, wouldn't it? That's probably where I got my last bunch of new plants. Is it? I don't know. Oh no, my fern leaf cactus. That would have been the last new plant I got. <laughs> there we go. All potted up. Oh, she's a birdie. I'm excited. <laughs> are you a fan of begonias or are you like purely kind of philodendrons, anthuriums, hoyas? I don't know. What kind of plants do you have in your collection? I definitely have a variety and I feel like I go through phases where like for a while it was just anthuriums that I was getting like new anthuriums and I love, I just love anthuriums, I really do. But I feel like I'm branching out a little bit again into other genus i genuses genre <laughs> oh my god it's friday gang it's the end of the week and i need to sleep <laughs> anyway if you haven't seen ferns begonia video i've got it linked here do check it out if you have watched it and you fancy staying on my channel for a little bit longer check out this video where i repot my lafaglossum metallicum and i give you a little bit update about how i've been doing recently i'll see you over there thanks for watching bye